I really, really want to believe that the solution to online propaganda is better education. And I do believe that with an asterisk. I, I do believe that ultimately. But there's going to be a couple of problems that are in the way. And this video is sort of thinking through those problems and making a specific case for the type of education we need. So one of the problems, of course, is that propaganda really targets our emotions in a way where it's feeding uh, the propaganda's truth, which might be truth, or it might be falsehood, or it might be true, but um, true in a way that leads to distorted perceptions of the world. But, but it's fed to people through these emotional uh, cues. And, and it's hard to fight that. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that the people who are educators in any setting, whether it's higher education, like where I teach as, at a brick and mortar college, or whether it's an educational space online, all of those educators are subject to distortion in their perceptions of truth by online propaganda. So this is where I'm going in this video. First, I'm going to ask the question, what is propaganda? How is that different from education? And I'm going to look at the Consilience Project's article on this, which I will post to below, which really tries to untangle the problem that um, everybody perceives the other side the people who disagree with them as being propagandists and their side as being educators. So how do you get around that question? And then I'm going to try to create a visualization of how propaganda moves online because I think that'll help us think about how we fight propaganda through education. And then I'm going to make the case that the main skill educators need to give students uh, practice in and teach students how to do is to handle the truths that are hardest to handle, that you might react negatively to, and to sort through what is true and false from any potential truth that comes your way, especially if it's uncomfortable. So first, let's just look at the Consilience Project's definition of propaganda. Propaganda is any media product that has been deliberately designed and distributed by or for a political group in order to cause political action. And they distinguish propaganda from advertising by saying the advertising is meant to change consumer behavior and the person doing that is not a political group but a, an economic group of some sort, like a company. But both propaganda and advertising are media products of some sort, and they both involve intentional design and distribution. Now, of course, the part of the article that I was most interested in as an educator is what is the difference between propaganda and education? because those two things have a lot of similarities, and the Consilience Project pointed out those similarities. Propaganda and education are both deliberately designed. Like when I prepare my classes for the semester, I'm very intentional about the setup I'm, I'm creating for students. Both propaganda and education are information environments. They're feeding people information. And a lot of propaganda will stick with true information. They don't want the people they're trying to propagandize to notice untrue information and lose trust. Both of these involve emotional engagement. So I started out this video by saying I'm worried about propaganda because it does look for these emotional ends to sort of sneak in its own agenda. And yet, I do the same thing as an educator. I think carefully about how I can engage my students motivationally, how I can make them want to learn more, how I can make them excited to come to class and excited to do their homework and do their reading and engage with other students on the topics I teach. The fact that emotion is so key to motivation means any teacher who's not thinking about emotion is not going to be as effective as they could be. Both propaganda and education involve some kind of behavioral change. 
where the propaganda wants you to vote certain ways or wants you to support certain leaders or dismiss certain leaders. In education, you also want behavioral change. Like, I want lifelong learners out of my students, and that means that I want to change their behavior when they encounter the, the educational content. And finally, both of these involve specific ideas that you need to learn and encounter and use in order to absorb those ideas. So we can't just say, if you're learning specific ideas, even if they're true, we can't just say that's not propaganda. Sometimes it is. So what is the difference between propaganda and education? And I really love this. The difference is with propaganda, Propaganda acts in the interest of powers held by a political group, whereas education acts in the interest of reducing the difference of power between those in the know and those who need to learn. And I love this difference because I can completely see this when I think about students moving through their four-year college degree. I love teaching senior level courses because those students have actually gotten to the point where they can actually challenge my own thinking a lot more. Like they understand economics. If they're asking a question or challenging me, it's much less likely than say freshmen that that challenge is due to some fundamental misunderstanding of economics. More likely, they understand the, the basic principles of economics, but they're just giving me new ways of thinking. So I learn so much when I teach seniors. Now, of course, I learn also when I teach freshmen because sometimes looking at content with a fresh perspective can, be, can give you different and new ways of thinking about it. But a lot of the things that students think of as challenges when they're freshmen are actually not challenges. It's just like, no, actually, you just don't understand the concept. Um, let me explain it in a different way. So there is that reduction of the difference of power from a freshman year to a senior year where the seniors are sort of at the level where they can be peers intellectually with their professors in a way that you can't really argue that freshmen are. And that's one of the wonderful things about education is it's trying to create a body of peers in the, in the world, in the environment, who can contend with each other, who can bring new knowledge to bear, and it, it's not to empower one and disempower the other. Because yeah, propaganda increases the power differential. Um, the propaganda will make the propagandist way more powerful, and the person who's serving the interests of the propaganda actually kind of less powerful, because they're just acting out there in the world, maybe thinking they're acting in their own interests, but really serving someone else's interests because, because their emotions and their uh, information sphere are too intertwined. Okay, so I would actually like to visualize propaganda in the online space. Because most people who receive propaganda are not receiving it directly from the source. Like if it's a country who's doing the propaganda, they're trying to get their message out essentially to the influencers. And we know that information is going to bounce around online. So the influencers don't get that propaganda directly from the source. They get it from some other source. So I almost think of this like a pinball machine where the propagandist is going to shoot out pieces of propaganda packaged in ways that they think are going to increase the chances of uptake. And that propaganda kind of bounces around and when it reaches a, an influencer, if it's been well packaged, that influencer will be, uh, will take that propaganda in in the same way that everybody takes propaganda in, which is the propaganda is designed to sort of get at your emotional space in a way that feels satisfying or that sort of is easy to take in, fits in with your worldview, is angry at the right people, villainizes the right people, makes the self look heroic, all of that stuff that mixes emotions and information, well-packaged propaganda it's like a peanut butter pill. I like the peanut butter pill analogy where 
the dog won't take the pill unless it's sort of wrapped up in peanut butter, in which case you can actually get the dog to swallow something they would not otherwise swallow. And I think with propaganda and people, it's sort of the emotional coding of that information that will get people to swallow truths that they haven't necessarily fully vetted. But in any case, the propaganda reaches the influencers and then reaches a lot of people that way, which is a great technique from the propagandist's perspective because the propagandist, um, oh, because the influencer actually has a, a very good sense of the emotional environments of their audience. Like, even if the propaganda message is somewhat imperfectly wrapped in peanut butter or packaged when they reach the influencers, if the influencers take it in, they know how to tweak that message such that it will be even more compelling to their audiences. Like, influencers, their whole job is to understand their audience, understand what motivates their audience, what their audience will like and take in. And so these influencers, if they're good at their job, are going to be excellent at honestly spreading propaganda. And I think one thing we sometimes see is the same core message of propaganda will get wrapped up in different packages for different, potentially really different sides of the political spectrum, so that perhaps even far right and far left groups may be swallowing the same truth from the propagandists. It's just packaged very differently for each set. Now, the last little bit that I want to add is that if we want this model of education to fight propaganda, the most important thing for an educator to teach their students to do is to be able to handle truths that are emotionally uncomfortable, truths that challenge their worldview, truths that uh, challenge them to grow, truths that don't quite fit in their worldview that they may need to look at from a whole bunch of different angles to even make sense of. Because um, the way truths enter people's brains and bodies is this peanut butter pill method. And um, if we want people to think more critically about the messages that are packaged so satisfyingly, so emotionally, uh, wonderfully to people, then they need to perhaps look at the, the parts of that message that are uncomfortable to hear. And to do that, that's actually an emotional skill. Like looking at truths where you're like, I'm not sure this is... I, I'm not sure I feel good about this. This makes me feel uncomfortable. This makes me uh, rethink the people that I've said for so long are villains. Um, it, it's really, to actually see the truth of something, you may need to adjust when, the, when information that's coming at you feels uncomfortable. It, and, and the way of thinking about this, I think, is to imagine, imagine there's a peanut butter pill truth that an influencer that you trust and you love is feeding you. The influencer doesn't realize it's propaganda, but for you to be able to sort of stop that message from entering your worldview and your heart, you need to be like, wait a second. And, and here's the reason I think this is the case. Um, if you're going to be critical of information that's coming at you, especially from people you trust, you may need to actually listen to some voices that are critical of what they're saying. And that's kind of painful. Like, if one influencer sort of swallows the propaganda whole, um, then the way of counteracting that is oftentimes for someone else who's thought really critically about perhaps a challenging issue. Someone else that you might trust, but maybe not quite as much, they're going to have that critique. And listening to someone who's critiquing an influencer you identify with, an influencer that you, you feel comforted by, that's not going to feel good. In fact, um, encountering ideas that are different from you tend to get people's hackles up. Like, they get my hackles up. And I do it because I know it's worthwhile to listen to the voices that, 
that aren't fun to listen to or that that challenge me and make me feel icky in some way, when I have the courage to actually listen to those people, then I can sort through what is true and what is not true about their perspective. And I think um, I think that it's the emotional part of that that's really leading to faster spread of propaganda.